Hello, everyone. My name is Pierre Flinner of Uppsala University in Sweden, and I am one of the people who nominated Mats Karlsson of uh, RISE Research Institutes of Sweden for the ACP Research Excellence Award. And in this interview, we'll do a flashback on his life and career. Welcome, Mats. Thank you so much, Pierre. All right, my first question to you, Mats, is uh, where and how did you grow up? I was born in this city, Uppsala, Sweden. Um, when I was uh, quite small, my family moved to Umeå, which is in uh, northern Sweden. Uh, my dad was a journalist. My mother was a dermatologist. I have a sister. And when I was 18 in 1974, I, I moved back here to Uppsala for military service and uh, university. Talking of your university education, uh, so where, and I think we know that now, and in what subject did you take your university education? So my undergraduate studies were at Uppsala University, and I, I started in math. I was, I wanted to uh, study computers. There was no proper computer science education at the time. So as a substitute, I took uh, uh, numerical analysis courses. Uh, and uh, also a couple of courses in Slavic languages. And then uh, for graduate studies, I started at Uppsala and then transferred to um, the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, where I uh, did my, my doctorate. Okay, then um, now we are being curious. Uh, how did you get into constraint logic programming and constraint programming? Well, at uh, the time of my roughly of my uh, doctorate i i was already quite hooked on on prolog so so that was the background say and then uh, we're now speaking um, early or mid 1980s so then um i learned about clpr by jackson jaffer jean louis lasse and and others uh, and i i Thought that was pretty cool, actually. And then, uh, then I received a copy of um, Pascal van Hentenrich's PhD thesis. That, that was roughly the same time, around 1987 or so. And uh, uh, now I, I thought this is this is really cool. Uh, I, I want this. I want to have this in in my prologue. So so I guess that was the start you just said uh, my prologue so now you have to explain us to us the relationship between what you call my prologue and then six to prologue and what is six and what is its successor rise can you explain a bit and how come you joined six right so the two prologues we mentioned are in fact one so it's the same so um Yes, the story begins in about 1985. Um, at that point, Sweden had a lot of smallish, quite specialized research institutes, and they were usually connected with one branch of industry or another. But there was uh, no such institute at the time for what we now call AT. Uh, I don't think the acronym AT existed at the time. They would call it, I don't know, data processing or something like that. But there was a phenomenon, namely the the uh, what the Japanese were doing. They had, in, in the 80s, they had launched a, a big effort called fifth generation computer systems. And this uh, spooked the um, computer industry in 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 the West, at least in the U.S., in Europe, and also in Sweden. 
So uh, in your in in Germany, for example, uh, there was a consortium of of companies that formed that set up a dedicated research institute called, institute called ECRC. There was one in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, I lost the name. Uh, doing the same essentially. And in the same, let's say, era and spirit, uh, Sweden set up an institute called uh, the Swedish Institute of Computer Science, called SIX. SIX had uh, uh, originally, I think, three different research directions, one of which was logic programming. And uh, so I was part of the, of the first batch of people to be recruited two, two, uh, six. Uh, so I joined then one of the laboratories of, of this, uh, newly fledged Institute, so to speak. It was the logic programming laboratory, which was headed by Saif Haridi, who was uh, one of my uh, supervisors for the, for the PhD. And, uh, there was a plan or, or, um, it was decided to p perform research, conduct research on, on parallel logic programming. But to do that, you needed some kind of implementation to play with. And I was hired more or less to, to, uh, to do that. And uh, uh, later I, I also wrote my thesis on that topic. Um, yes, yeah, so that is how Six was founded, and this uh, implementation, which began as as a research tool, then then grew in into an implementation that turned out to be useful by at least some other people, and and it got to be called Sixtus Prologue, which is the name, of course, is it's a bit of a pun because there was already a well known implementation called Quintus Prologue. And can you explain how SIX became or became part of RISE and what RISE stands for? Yes, so SIX uh, continued as an independent entity, entity until 2018 or so. Uh, at that time, or I think earlier, um, there was a political decision in, in the upper echelons of government and uh, in, in Sweden to, to, to restructure the, the institute landscape in, in a rather drastic way, namely to merge them all in, in, into one uh, body. Uh, and that body is, is RICE, which stands for Research Institutes Sweden, which is a government-owned research institute, independent and conducts uh, research in a lot of different areas, not only research, because a large part of RISE is also consists of uh, uh, expensive test beds and, and demonstration facilities that basically you only need one piece of each for the, for the needs of the entire country. And in general, it's an innovation partner and uh, uh, part of its mandate is to uh, contribute to a sustainable society. So the transition of, of from six to rise was rather rather seamless, I would say. We were all absorbed by, by rise. Our uh, employment terms were unchanged for well for for the large part at least. I see. So now the, the, the former six employees that are now employees of RISE, are they all geographically at the same location in the capital in Stockholm or how, how is it physic geographically set up? There has been some some movement in within RISE. So RISE is, is a national institute with uh, over 3,000 employees with offices all over the country. And uh, I, it's difficult to me to keep track of where everybody goes, but 
for myself, um, I we we have a small satellite here in Uppsala. So so the the former Rice had its its office in North Stockholm, uh, but I that Rice that that uh, office formed the satellite already, I think in 1998. So since then, uh, we've had a group here in Uppsala. Some people have gone to the Westeros office. That's I know that for a fact. And beyond that, I, I really can't say. I think the majority are, are still in, in North Stockholm. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, Mats and I, we have our offices uh, just a few meters apart. <laughs> so, um, and it's been enormous fun to have you aboard uh, our research group here in uh, Uppsala University, Mats, as uh, as a f fellow researcher and a project partner. And I'm also one of the many happy users of uh, Sixtus uh, Prolog myself uh, and others in my group. Um, so would it be fair to say then that uh, you have been all along the chief developer of Sixtus Prolog? Should we give all most of the credit to you or are there other people you want to name? Um, thank you, Pierre. I, I've also enjoyed working with you and, and uh, the group here uh, quite a lot, and, and I think it's been very fruitful. We've published many papers and uh, met many great people and so forth. Um, yes, I think it would be fair to, to call me the, the main developer. Um, there are many people who have, let's say, come and gone over the years. Um, I would, of course, mainly mention my, my comrade in crime, so to speak, Per Mildner, uh, also em employed at Rick Rice, X6 uh, colleague, and, and we actually shared the room. Um, Magnus Ratfeldt is has contributed specifically to two parts of the of the um, constraint solver. Right, wonderful. So uh, you've written uh, a, a lot of academic uh, papers, which among others you presented at uh, CP conferences and CPIOR and in journals. Uh, other than being uh, Mr. Sixtus Prologue, in other words, what would you claim is uh, is is your main claim to fame in constrained programming? Honestly, I'm not sure that I I have any let's say um, tangible invention that I would like to mention. It's it's rather, I would say. Um, a big collection of, of uh, ideas that I would contribute to other people. Uh, and, and some of those people, well, for example, some, some key component in the solver are, are the, the uh, invention of so-called attributed variables, which is an, <clears throat> well, extension to, to the concept of a logical variable in, in, in Prolog. And uh, that, uh, particular design is due to um, Christian Holzbauer. Uh, there's also a technique that we're using for for um, timestamp trailing, uh, which uh, is due to Abder Agun. Um, Pascal van Hentenrich uh, published the idea of of uh, indexicals as, as a kind of uh, almost like an assembly language for, for uh, writing propagators in, in, uh, in a constraint solver. Uh, indexicals are part of the anatomy of, of the Sixth Solver, uh, together with a bunch of other techniques. Um, I'm using watched literals, uh, which uh, I'm not sure exactly who invented them, but they came into CP via Ian Ghent, for example. Um, I worked 
quite a bit on, on the general anatomy of things with, with Christian Schulte. Uh, and then, of course, we have all the algorithms. And here I had the pleasure to work with, over many years, I, wor I worked closely with uh, Nicola Belliciano. Uh, he was uh, employed by Six for a while and, and uh, lived here. So uh, we did came up with many great algorithms together, actually. Um, the solver, of course, uses many other algorithms invented by other people as well. Um, so returning to claims of fame, uh, maybe the tangible claim of fame, though, is, is uh, I would say, the... Uh, uh, medals in the Minizink challenge mm -hmm. that uh, we have been able to win uh, uh, every year in a row since nine, since 2019. Anyway, uh, while on the topic, uh, I would say also that I've had the privilege to to work on on some rather cool projects using constraint programming, I, I would like to mention in particular the Unison project, was, which was about um, using um, constraints for, for a fragment of a, of a compiler for, for doing the uh, uh, instruction scheduling and register allocation of, of a compiler tool chain, uh, which was a, a great, great um, PhD project where I worked together with Christian Schulte, uh, Roberto Castaneda Lozano, and uh, Gabriel Blindel. <clears throat> so this resulted in the uh, in uh, Roberto's and Gabriel's uh, PhD thesis. Excellent work, I think. Um, also on, on the industrial side, um, I've really not taken part in, in too many applications of constraints, uh, but um, I know for a fact that that uh, constraint programming and indeed Sixtus um, is used out there for, for configuration, for product configuration, for example. Um, unfortunately, when you, when you have a software that you distribute, um, there is this problem with feedback. You don't you don't. You never know what people actually do with the stuff, <laughs> and even if they do cool things, they don't tell you, or they they may tell you, but they they say this is this is a trade secret. You can never tell anybody. That is a pity, but that's the way it is. Yeah. So uh, congratulations on a sustained thirty plus year uh, high quality contribution to the solver part of uh, constraint programming to the, the algorithmic underpinnings and to outreach, including in projects with industry. So I have a bit of a more open-ended uh, final question. CP, among others, is part of artificial intelligence. Uh, and the landscape is changing those uh, these days. Uh, so uh, how will ideas that originated from constrained programming, how, how will they survive or how will they survive? What, what future do you see? I, I don't really have a crystal ball, <laughs> but I think CP is fine. CP is doing fine. It's, it's um, I think it would be fair to call it a bit of a niche technology, but it, it works super well. Uh, when it when it fits the needs of of an application, and I I, I really think that Minisync, the Minisync language, was a, a mega boost for CP. So CP is in a much better place than it would be if if something like Minisync would not have been invented. Um, I think also. We shouldn't forget that that uh, let's say the the CSP solving use case is is not the only use case for CP. 
So even though in most cases you have one big combinatorial problem that, that you want to solve, and that is like a CSP and a use mini sync or something. But there are also other use cases when when uh, you don't want to solve an entire constraint problem at once. You you want to solve, let's say, fragments of it at once, or you want to you want to um, do some exploration, do some limited search and some propagation, make some decision and go f further, etc. And, and um, that is also a, a, a valid, a relevant, relevant use case. I think that's an excellent use case for for let's say the the classic CLP style of programming. But not only CLP. I think uh, the combination of CP and logic programming that is the best impedance match that exists. Uh, that is really the best, let's say, host language for for CP. But CP is fine also in in for example interfaced from from um, Python or C++ or whatever. So this other use case that I have in mind works works well really from, from any host language. Um, and and uh, the one use case I have in mind where, where this, let's say, non-CSP type of solving is extremely relevant is, is in uh, interactive configuration where after after every user choice, you have to perform uh, various kinds of propagation and search in order to recompute and refresh what what uh, the the valid remaining alternatives are for for the unassigned variables. But there are also other uh, cases where that kind of computation is relevant. Okay, Mats, thank you very much for your optimistic outlook uh, of the future of our research community and uh, interesting flashback over your long career. And uh, once again, on behalf of also my fellow nominators, uh, I con we congratulate you for your ACP research excellent award and it was a great pleasure for me to interview you Mats. thank you thank you um, so much pierre it, it was a pleasure for for me as well all right bye